YouTube Oz it going. The Goat House is back one week until the NFL draft, and I got an updated two-round mock draft with some trades. We're going to do one more mock draft, our final mock draft next week. We're going to have loads of content coming out, even though there's only a week to go. We already have loads of content on the channel. Ch head over to our channel. Check out those recent videos. You won't be disappointed. Like, subscribe to notifications on because we will be live during day one of the NFL draft right here on YouTube. Day two and three on our Twitter. It's a must-follow. Always talking with you guys there. It's on your screen. There's also a link pinned in the comments. Links in the comments for our Discord and our sponsors, GLD Shop, which I have their Eagles chain on right now. They have a lot more than just the Eagles, of course. Uh, Liquid IV, Walk to Mock, other sponsors. We have codes for all those sites. First pick, Panthers. Pretty much locked in. I won't say it's locked in because the Panthers haven't announced it like early. That's it. Sometimes happen. I don't love when that happens, but uh, we're pretty much you know there with it being locked in. And uh, I've th throughout most of this process or all of this process, I've been a believer that it'd be C.J. Stroud. So I'm kind of joining everyone else here that it'll be Bryce Young. Just curious to know if it was Stroud from the start, Bryce Young all along, or if they knew Young and Stroud were both worthy and they were. Just, Trade for the pick and evaluate the two guys. I think all three of those are possibilities. Uh, I am a little bit more of a Stroud guy, but Bryce Young is super talented. It's just will he hold up long-term durability-wise is is the question we're all asking. Uh, you like to say optimistic and say yes. So uh, they get a solid talent there. First overall, if that is the pick, uh, it gets it becomes very, very, very interesting at pick number two with the Houston Texans, which they could trade this pick. They could take a quarterback. It sounds like they aren't going to take a quarterback with this pick. It sounds like they do want to trade it. Can they trade it? Will a team give up the value to come up to two when they can just wait or trade to three? So that's where I think it. I'm thinking that they, somebody probably doesn't trade up to the spot, but it is possible. And I've also heard if they do go with the quarterback, maybe they're more likely to go Levis over Stroud. It's a little bit surprising, hard to believe, but. Yeah, I guess you never know. The Texans, uh, you know, interesting organization. They made some surprising picks last year, too. Uh, but I'm going to go with Tyree Wilson here, which take away the, you know, not going quarterback, which that's already surprising. But going Wilson over Anderson is also a little surprising. I do love Tyree, Wil Tyree Wilson as a fit in D'Amico Ryan's defense. Ability to move. You have to move this guy around a bit. You can't just stick him off the edge. Anderson is much better off the edge. He's more explosive, better get off. Uh, you know, Wilson, you know, also injured during this whole pre-draft process, which is tough, but a versatile player with a rare elite length and power combination already polished stopping the run. I do love the fit. If, if I don't know how you don't go Stroud here and it's a little tough going Wilson over Anderson, but this is my, is per, I'm predicting the pick with this mock, with these mocks. I'll do a G like what I would do mock probably on Twitter. We'll have to get that to that. Uh, probably sometime in the very near future future, but uh, I am predicting Tyree Wilson to the Texans second overall third overall. We have a trade. So this was tough too, because for multiple reasons, because Schefter seems to think that only one quarterback will go in the top three. Nobody will trade up to two and three. And I definitely could see that teams might be a little hesitant. They might see that the quarterbacks might drop a little bit. Uh, you know, especially if we, if, you, if teams feel confident that the Texans won't be taking a quarterback at two, or if they're looking to trade to pick that becomes obvious. So almost didn't have the trade here. Another reason against this for the Raiders is if they get C.J. Stroud, you get C.J. Stroud, a pro-ready, top prospect quarterback. Like you, you kind of got to start him right away. But you just signed Jimmy Garoppolo. In this case, I'd imagine they played Jimmy Garoppolo for a year. Stroud sits on the bench. You just traded all that away to go up to three to sit Stroud on the bench. But then if you start Stroud, it's like, all right, you just gave Jimmy Garoppolo that big contract to sit on the bench. So... You know, it's tough. I love C.J. Stroud, so getting C anybody getting C.J. Stroud after one is kind of a win, but there there are some, for the Raiders specifically, some parts of it that you don't really love that, that I just explained, but uh, I don't think the Titans would... I would love C.J. Stroud. The, I'd love C.J. Stroud for anybody, but Titans maybe would be interested. I don't think they would go up this far. We talked about it being a possibility. Still is a possibility. They have too many other needs. Well, not too many other needs. The Raiders do, too. They almost need a whole defense. That's why it's tough, but... If a team were to trade up the three and hop the Colts right now, I'm thinking to be the Raiders. Uh, so they swap Cardinals Raiders. That is swap three and seven, uh, two Oh four go, which is the, which is, or 70 is the third round pick. 70 goes to the Cardinals. Two Oh four, uh, goes to the Cardinals and then 2024 first goes to the Cardinals. So a pretty good haul for the Cardinals. You could eliminate that two Oh four, but 
you know, what value of C.J. Stroud you going up to get that quarterback, hopping over the Colts, you know, maybe have to give up a little extra there. Um, also heard the Cardinals are almost desperate to move back. Um, everybody wants to move back in this draft just because there's a few elite players, and after that, everyone's pretty even. You know, from just outside pick 10 to this middle of the second round, it's really not that much, not a huge, there's a difference, not a huge difference. So that's why everyone wants to move back, get more picks. So if teams are desperate to move back, you know, maybe they won't get correct value, you know. Sometimes we see that. So maybe this is uh, this could be the top end for what the Cardinals can get. But the Raiders go up and they get a big-time quarterback prospect and they're kind of set for the future there. Uh, but it is an interesting decision. Uh, the fourth pick, Colts going Will Levis. I am starting to believe, I was talking about a little bit ago on Twitter, I'm starting to believe that the Colts could be wrong, but the Colts may actually take Will Levis even if C.J. Stroud is on the board. So they're, you know, therefore the Raiders, if they're confident in that, they don't, maybe a team doesn't have, like the Raiders don't, don't have to trade up to three. You could just stay put and could Stroud be available even after four. Things start getting insane then, you know, start getting super wild. But some of the Colts like Levis throughout most of the process. Uh, we thought they liked Anthony Richardson. It sounds like Levis right now could all be smoke. Maybe they like Richardson better than Levis. Maybe they like him better than him and Stroud. Maybe they like Stroud better than both. They should, you know, but I think they'll go Levis here at, uh, at pick four. The Kentucky quarterback, which is a boomer bust guy. The thing that I just can't get over is lacking touch. You know, sometimes doesn't even know his own arm. He has incredible arm strength. That's tough part, though. Could, uh, you know, Shane Steichen, some good recent history with quarterbacks. So could they get the most out of him? But, you know, why do you want that, that project? Why wouldn't you want to get like CJ? Well, in this case, CJ Stroud is off the board. So I guess we won't go there. But, uh, yeah, in this case, I have them taking Will Levis, the Kentucky quarterback, at four. Uh, pick five. So with the Seahawks, and I could be this to be, you know, look kind of funny if I'm wrong, but what I'm about to say, but I, I think the Seahawks will end up with Will Anderson or Jalen Carter. I guess you can throw Tyree Wilson in that mix. I just really think it's Will Anderson or Jalen Carter, and they were both on the board here, so that's why it was very tough. I was actually back and forth on it. Um, several teams within the league are expecting the Seahawks to take Jalen Carter, uh, and I have been thinking that as well even before that report came out, that came out, and now all of a sudden I don't have Jalen Carter here. The thing is, I think they do they do like Jalen Carter, and they may very well take him, but maybe are not expecting Will Anderson to be available. Uh, you know, if, if the, I mean, the Texans can very well take Will Anderson at two, but if they take Tyree Wilson like I had in this scenario, the Cardinals can take Will Anderson at three, but they could trade back like they want to, you know? Uh, so that would mean Will Anderson's available most likely. So I, I think that just makes a little bit more sense, a little bit safer of the pick. They get their edge rusher. They got a couple free agents coming up as well at the position. They could use a D tackle. They did sign Jaron Reed for that spot. Uh, they got Draymond Jones for the three, four end spot, uh, but they go Will Anderson. It's kind of, it's really 50, 50 to me. I'm like, if they don't end up with Carter or Anderson on draft day, I might be a little surprised. Like there's other guys where I won't be like, like, if it's Tyree Wilson, then it's like, I'm not, like, crazy surprised. I don't know if I love that fit, though, you know? I really think it's going to be Anderson or Carter. Could they both be off the board? I don't think they would both be off the board by then. So, in this scenario, we go with Will Anderson. Uh, then the sixth pick, uh, the Lions could go Jalen Carter. They could go Christian Gonzalez. They could get the quarterback of the future. I don't think so here. I'm starting to feel Devon Weather Witherspoon, the Illinois corner for the Lions. Starting to think that is the pick. Uh, I love the top two corner. I love the whole cornerback class, actually. But the top two corners, they are great. I s slightly prefer Christian Gonzalez over Witherspoon. Um, just, just a little bit. You know, more, you know, obviously more of the length, uh, more of the playmaking ability in, in zone. Witherspoon it flies around the field, though. He's really exciting to watch. I, I think, you know, uh, that, that this def I mean, this coaching staff – you know, with Campbell and the defensive coaching staff with Aaron Glenn will like the intensity, you know, the high motor of Witherspoon, his ability to come up and hit as well. But I could, you know, Aaron Glenn coming from the Saints, I, I, I keep saying, you know, I could, you could see a little bit of Latimer in, uh, in Christian Gonzalez. So maybe that, you know, Glenn coming from the Saints could see that as well. It's a tough decision here with the other pieces on the board. And I've kind of, you know, when I mocked the corner here, for the most part this offseason, I've mocked Gonzalez. 
Uh, and I s prefer him slightly over Witherspoon, but it's starting to feel, and I've heard that too, teams around the league think they like Witherspoon. They drafted Kirby Joseph, which doesn't mean a whole lot, but they drafted him out of Illinois last year when he had just one really good breakout year. They saw the upside, and they loved that year on tape. Could be the same thing with the corner from Illinois and Witherspoon. Um, so starting to feel that could be the pick. I've heard that teams are calling the lines already, like, hey, we might be calling you on draft day to trade up to the spot if the quarterback starts slipping. Uh, so that's interesting. I don't think the Lions want to trade it, though. I think they want to stay put. They already have that second, you know, that second first round pick, and they have two seconds. I don't think they want to trade back if it is if it's a very very slight trade back. Uh, if we're talking like a one spot with the Raiders, which I don't know why the Raiders would do that, um, or two spots with the Falcons, then I think they would do it, and they can get an extra pick and still get their guy. Be a heck of a move there. Uh, other than that, I, I think who would be calling them? Yeah, I guess it could be the Falcons, but I, I would be thinking like the Titans. Uh, this would kind of be the range they trade up. I don't think the Lions want it, and I wouldn't really agree with it either. Want to move back? They move back and still get one of these corners, you know, in that 11 spot. Wow, you know that would be that'd be impressive. So a little bit of a gamble though. But right now, kind of feeling Witherspoon to the Lions at six, um, seven. We had the Cardinals trading back, so they land the other corner there in Christian Gonzalez. Uh, we saw the trade details already, but the Cardinals get a little bit of a haul. That might be maximum. Cardinals they almost sound, based on what Diana Rossini was saying this earlier today, they they it almost sounds like the Cardinals really want to move back. And if you really want to move back, you'll pretty much accept not anything, but you'll accept, you know, because usually when you're the team moving back, the team moving up has to give up more value. If you're moving back, you get you're gonna get more value. But so it it, it could be they just accept like right on value, like right, you know, dead even. Uh, you know, but Christian Gonzalez, it just seems like a Jonathan Gannon type corner here, a guy that can play man zone, can press in either really instinctive playmaker, lockdown guy at the same time, super long, super explosive, super athletic, just really fun to watch here. These corners I have going back to back six, seven, uh, last year, sauce Gardner and, and, um, Derek Stingley went back to back even earlier in this. And then you know, we didn't think they were going to go that early until like the day of, and it was a little bit of a surprise. I think these, these, this duo might be even better, possibly. I know, you know, in terms of combining the duo, I know Sauce Gardner had an insane rookie year, um, but these guys, you know, maybe they can go even earlier. Maybe it can be the same thing like last year. These corners just go, you know, three and. I don't know the Colts would take one at four. Then they're going to take quarterback. But you get my point. They can go. And this is pretty early. They can go a little bit earlier here. But um, yeah, Witherspoon, Gonzalez, back to back here. So the Cardinals trade back and get their corner, which would be very important for Gannon's defense. But they need a whole lot, especially with guys like Buda Baker. You know, who knows if he's going to be on the team next year? So interesting situation for the Cardinals. Almost looking like a rebuild. Uh, the eighth pick, a little bit of a surprise. I'll go with Peter maybe to some because you don't really see this mocked a whole lot. But I go with Peter Skaronsky to the Falcons. Uh, the Falcons, I've seen them being mocked a lot. Like Nolan Smith, I think that's a little early. I don't know if I really see him as a fit in Ryan Nielsen's defense either. Uh, I don't think they, I don't think they take Bijan here. I don't, I don't think they take a running back. I think they could want one of those corners, the two top corners that already went off the board, and I think they would be interested in one of the two top pass rushers. They were already off the board. I think Miles Murphy's a possibility. I think he's worthy of the picks possibility. But I keep hearing they're still looking for a guard. They're kind of sniffing around for the free agents available. Really isn't the best guys in free agency still. Uh, they want to see what happens in the draft first. Peter Skronsky was a high end high end tackle that could be even better of a guard. It just seems like a really safe prospect that has Pro Bowl potential. And the Falcons are what they're trying to do is just build the best possible roster around like guy like Desmond Ritter. I mean, they take Anthony Richardson here. I don't think so, but maybe. But and then just adding another top tier guard with Lindstrom, you know, on that offensive line, uh, th th it could be that deadly. You know, that maybe the best offensive line for the future there. So, uh, and then you know, Matthews is, isn't the youngest guy in the world. If he ends up leaving, you know, sometime near future, uh, Skaronsky can play that left tackle. So having that kind of backup, that insurance, uh, makes you feel good as well. It's kind of a bonus. So. Uh, one that isn't mocked at all that actually would not surprise me because he's worthy of the pick, and I, I've heard that they're still kind of on the hunt to complete that offensive line uh, looking for another guard here. Unless I think one of the younger guys can play the spot, then it's a possibility as well. Uh, nine, I'm starting to feel Broderick Jones for the Bears. Uh, it's tough here because Jalen Carter was is still on the board. If he gets by Seattle 
Of course, he could go to the Lions. Of course, the Cardinals traded back. He could go to the Cardinals still. But in this scenario, if he gets by the Seahawks, which is kind of 50-50, he could still be available. And the Bears could definitely take him. Um, you know, they need interior defense. They need a lot. They need interior defense alignment pretty badly. Eberflus values that big time. Where is their stance on his off-the-field issues? You know, bringing him to Chicago, um, you know, they, they very well could take him. But uh, And Paris Johnson Jr. has been linked to them quite a bit. Really good fit. But I am just starting just a gut feeling recently. Maybe they try. I could see the Bears trading back, too. I was kind of thinking of that. Um, I Last mock, I did the Steelers, Steelers trade up, Bears trade back. Thought about it again. Um, it's definitely a possibility. Maybe they don't want to move back that far because they so they can still get a guy like Broderick Jones. But Jones, you know, when I yeah, I talked about it a bit in the all, all offensive line video, maybe on Twitter a little bit as well. Uh, you know, his tape really wasn't that good, surprisingly. Uh, and this might be a little early, but it wasn't that good. But you can see whenever Georgia got him out in space, uh, you know, he looked really good. You know, and but it was limited. It was very very limited because the because the Georgia Bulldogs ran more gap and inside zone. Uh, you know, so I can see his upside and he has the least amount of tackle snaps, offensive line snaps for the tackles in the class right now. So, and he's very quick, very athletic for his size. The bears are looking for athletes. They're looking for upside guys. They're looking for outside zone guys. I see Broderick Jones, even though he didn't play it a whole lot, that's where he would be good. You know, maybe not right away, but long term, where he has a lot of upside. So, Bears kind of still in the rebuild process. Uh, I, I can see them for all those reasons, uh, being very interested in a guy like Broderick Jones. Maybe it does feel a tiny bit early, just because, yeah, it's a boomer bust prospect. You're you're banking on upside here, uh, and his tape this year was, yeah, really, I was surprised. It really wasn't that good, but you can see the upside at the same time. There's some people that are really high on Broderick Jones, like really high. Uh, just because, yeah, again, that upside and what he can become. And I think the Bears are still one of those teams. I mean, they had the first overall pick. They're still one of those teams looking for upside like long term. So something I'm just starting to feel, you know, gut feeling. I think that's more of a fit than we once thought that everyone thinks, really. But they could go Carter here. They could go Paris Johnson Jr. Uh, but I don't think Carter gets by this point. Again, he could go five to the Seahawks. He could go in between there as well, but then the Eagles take a shot on him at him, him here at 10. Not really their biggest need right now because they do have other needs that kind of opened up a little bit, uh, but they, they would take Jalen Carter. Just too good of a talent. They have two first-round picks. Um, you know, they just take the best available player with this one here, pair him with Jordan Davis. You know, Fletcher Cox going to have one more year. Um, so that it, it would make some sense. I don't think it gets by this point. I really don't. Uh, it sounds like his agency th feels very confident with him going inside the top ten, uh, you know. And again, the Seahawks could take could very well take, like I said, fifty fifty there. So, you know, five to ten range. I mean, could the Cardinals stay put at three and take him? I guess we can't rule that out just because he's that good of a talent. So, Eagles go Carter at ten. Again, just too good to pass. And not really the biggest need. Uh, Anthony Rich ended up slipping through a little bit. You know, he kind of kind of got quiet with him right now. There was so much hype around the combine. Um, was there maybe too much hype? Is this more of his range? Does he even get by this point? I think it's somewhat of a possibility. Uh, the Titans could move up. Again, I I've, I've heard that they could be. You know, maybe three's three's a possibility. Maybe they're too early for them to move up. Uh, six. Will the Lions trade it though? That's kind of their range there. And I guess it depends on the quarterback. You know, if C.J. Stroud starts to slip, like we talked about, if uh, no quarterback goes top three, and the Colts just, for whatever reason, take Levis over Stroud, which I, I'm starting to think is a possibility. I don't really understand why, but it, it could be. Uh, you know, then Stroud could slip through to around that six range. I think the Lions would just take him, though, you know. Um, and the Titans could move up and grab him. Richardson, a raw prospect, a lot of upsides, a boomer bust guy, obviously. Uh, you don't love the accuracy right now, but he has those flash plays where it's like, all right, if we settle him down a little bit, mainly about just planting those feet, you know, getting the getting the feet right. Uh, I I think it's fixable. I think it's fixable, but it's still he's, he's a you know not gonna be ready right away, uh, and you have to work with him a little bit. Uh, pick twelve, I might surprise a little bit. You know, the Texans surprise people though. They surprise people, but I do like this fit. Jordan Addison starting to believe he can go earlier. You know, every every time I'm talking Jordan Addison, like I'm talking about him, I'm thinking he's going to go earlier and earlier. Um, you know, right before making my receiver rankings, I went and watched the Pittsburgh tape, went back, and it's like, yeah, okay, he can do a bit of everything because he, he had a little bit different role there. Two different offenses, very effective in both, two different roles. Uh, you know, it, it's 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 
It's big. And the Texans, you know, maybe would try to move up from here and get a quarterback if they didn't grab one at two. It's a possibility. They might have other plans like this scenario, which obviously we're not done with talking with the Texans even after this. Uh, they definitely could use another receiver. Uh, I think, you know, maybe some people want them to get Stroud and Jackson Smith and Jig, but the two Ohio State guys, that would be pretty. That would be pretty fun, you know. But uh, I think they would prefer Addison over JSN. Uh, you know, in that type of offense, you're going to run like a 49ers type offense. Addison can play in the slot, can play outside. You can, you know, get him the, the ball behind the line of scrimmage, you know, with screen passes. Uh, you know, he's really good on the in-breakers going across the middle of the field, whether it's shallow or deep. Um, he, he, he did a little bit more down the sideline, downfield. At USC last year playing a little bit more outside, you know. So I think the Texans in that type of offense, I think they would prefer Addison. And I can see, you know, Addison's not mocked up here that often, uh, but I can see it. I can definitely see it. Could they trade back a little bit and take them? Maybe. I, I, the Texans are going to surprise people. It's, it's kind of what they do. I know there's a little bit of a different staff in there, but the front office has some control there. And um, I, can, I, can, I can see it. I think not every team's going to have Addison over JSN, but I think the Texans would, my opinion here. So uh, they go at Tyree Wilson and Jordan Addison in this mock. Maybe, maybe a little surprising. Uh, 13th pick, uh, the Jets get Paris Johnson Jr. So Peter Skaronsky and... Broderick Jones off the board. So Paris Johnson and Darnell Wright are still available. So very interesting there. How the offensive line come off the board offensive lineman come off the board is gonna be very interesting. But yeah, uh, I'm a big Darnell Wright guy. I'm a big I like all these offensive linemen. Broderick Jones, I'm a little iffy on, but a lot of upside. Uh but yeah, I would talk about Wright being mocked to the Jets recently. I think they'll they would prefer Paris Johnson Jr. if they're both on the board. Uh, I, I, a little bit more of a fit. You see the Jets run a little bit outside zone. He's familiar with that coming from Ohio State, uh, plug and play type guy. So I think I think the Jets would be all over this. They would be all over to they, they would run to the podium probably in this scenario and, and grab Paris Johnson Jr. if he's on the board. So uh, that is my Jets pick at 13, 14, and then Darnell Wright falls right in the Patriots' lap. To me, this is an A plus in my opinion. And we'll be doing the grades, of course, uh, like always. But this would be an A-plus scenario for the Patriots. Darnell Wright, my top tackle. Not only my top tackle in the class, but, I mean, he won't be my top tackle for everybody. It's all about scheme, especially when guys are, like, that close and great. Paris Johnson, guys like that. But Wright fits the Patriots system scheme so well. Um, you know, exactly what they're looking for. They can start him at right tackle, too. I mean, they can move him at left if they need him to as well. But, um this would be absolutely perfect for the New England Patriots here. So they grab Darnell Wright at 14, uh, 15. Miles Murphy ended up slipping through. I think he should go earlier in this. I'm a big fan of Miles Murphy. I, I, I love the power and athleticism combo. I love the get off. I love winning with the length, winning with the power. Um, you know, he just needs to add more pass rush moves. I think uh, an NFL program can, can coach that up. And if he adds more to his game like that, this guy has elite potential, elite NFL potential. So um, seems like a Packers type build guy. You know, he feels like a 4 3 end, but the Packers do run a 3 4. But that's kind of what Rashawn Gary felt like. That's kind of what Preston Smith was, uh, you know, felt like, and, you know, he what he felt like. So uh, those are the type of guys they're looking for certain size, certain length, certain physicality. So, and just too talented to pass here. So, Miles Murphy. Um, you know, Preston Smith probably not going to be a long, around a super long time. So, Miles Murphy, Rashawn Gary, who looks like a pretty damn good duo for the future there. Packers could go. I've mocked JSN here a bit. It'd be a tough decision here. At the same time, you could see the Packers just passing on a receiver like they always do. Uh, Lucas Van Ness, maybe instead of Murphy. I think Murphy's just better. I think NFL teams might see that too. Um, uh, maybe one of the tight ends. Starting to think the tight ends can go earlier than expected. Uh, that's a possibility as well. And speaking of the tight ends, you got Washington going Michael Mayer. Yeah, people were talking about tight ends maybe not going in the first round at all, or maybe just one. But I, I'm not, maybe that's a little bit of smoke. I don't know if it's purposely smoke, but I think the two tight ends are going to go, and they're going to go earlier than you think because they're very good tight ends. It's a very good tight end class because there's multiple good tight ends, but. Starting at the top, I mean, you got some legit tight ends. And starting with the more complete one in Michael Mayer, uh, you know, so I, I, the commanders are going to do something that they always do something surprising, like something that's not really mocked them a lot. Um, you know, Jamin Davis was surprising. Jaha Dotson was pretty surprising, I thought. Um, and they traded back for him. 
I could see them going with one of the guards. That's kind of where I'm at. I was thinking, you know, Cyrus Torrance or Steve Avila, which is to be too early. It might feel a little early for both, but definitely be too early for Avila. But I think they, I can see them seeing him as a fit. Again, they're going to do something surprising. And I take a look at the two tight ends. I think Mayer or Kincaid a possibility. Eric Bieniemy is going to value that tight end position. You know, Logan Thomas has some had some injuries recently, and you know, not going to be around forever, of course. Uh, but Bieniemy is going to uh, value that tight end. Uh, Kincaid maybe a little bit more of a athletic uh, route runner and pass catcher, a little bit more than Mayer. So maybe the enemy looking for that Kelsey could be, you know, go that route. Mayer's underrated in terms of his footwork, but he can play in line. He can block much better than Kincaid. You know, they have the, uh, the enemy would have, you know, maybe not him, but the Chiefs would have Kelsey in line quite a bit. So one of those tight ends is very realistic. I'm thinking Mayer a little bit more since he's a little bit more complete. Uh, they go that route. Uh, and yeah, I, commanders all, you know, always do something interesting. So that's a possibility there. 17, Steelers go Joey Porter Jr. They could move up. We heard for Jalen Carter. Um, and he we had Jalen Carter available around that 9-10 range here. He went 10, so maybe they move up for him. I'm thinking if they move up, could it be for more of like an offensive tackle? Because they just need they need that left tackle still. So but they stay put. They could take Joey Porter Jr. Uh the lengthy corner from Penn State. Been, you know, watching corners recently. Uh, and he can press. I do like him a little better in zone, though, just because he struggles. Uh, when guys are, you know, when he's got to chase guys across the middle of the field, and that's where he tends to get a little grabby. So if you keep him on the boundary, where he's really, really good, uh, but you know, the Sears could do a little bit of that. Might be running a little more zone. Um, you know, adding Patrick Peterson kind of tells me that because he used to be a man corner, but not anymore. Um, you know, at his age and you know where where he was with the Vikings too. So um, Joey Porter Jr. probably the latest he goes here at 17. Uh, 18, I'm going to, you know, Lions are tricky to figure out in this scenario. Uh, I'm going to go with Dalton Kincaid, the tight end from Utah, which the fit actually makes a lot of sense, uh, here, but with their first pick, they went corner. They could go like in this scenario, they could go with an edge guy like Lucas Van Ness is still sitting there. Nolan Smith. Maybe those are possibilities. Um, you know, but Kincaid can make some sense. I keep here. The league is very, very high on him. <clears throat> and I think that again, I think the tight ends are going to go earlier than expected. I keep hearing Kincaid. You know, could definitely go around this range. I've heard there's an N NFC team specifically that uh, I didn't know. I don't know the team exactly, but it's been an, and it's somebody from the NFC team staff said they're hoping that he uh, is there for them. So who could that be? Who knows? Uh, but uh, yeah, I do. You know, one thing they trade T.J. Hawkinson last year, and so they kind of didn't really value the tight end position, but they didn't really want to pay him that big, big money. You know, and, and they move and they move on from him. You know, and they're playing playing Brock Wright as their in line tight end, and they have Zilstra as kind of their move tight end, and uh, and they got a couple other pieces too. But and it kind of worked out for them. But I, you know, and Hawkinson was kind of a do it all guy, obviously. But they were mainly playing him because of the talent he was. But they were like, oh, we move on from him. Brock Wright can play the in line, a lot cheaper option. But I think they could be looking for that slot tight end option, you know, kind of just an upgrade over Zilstra here. And that's what Dalton Kincaid is. He's almost like a big mismatch receiver uh, there in the slot. But he can play outside, and he can play in line if you need him to. So I actually think that makes sense. Uh, I know, you know, Lions fans, I was going to say Lions fans aren't throw, you know, about tight end possibility. I think I only gave them a tight end one other time, but it just seems like they're not throw when I, no matter what I give them for some reason. Uh, but, you know, it, it actually does make sense, make sense as a fit here and I can definitely see it you know I might me personally because this is predict the pick I might think it's a little early because I don't really love his blocking but again if the team like he'll be productive in Ben Johnson's offense for sure and he'll be productive no matter where he goes but um, you know injured during the pre-draft process you know mainly like a slot tight end type, type guy like a big receiver you know, you know maybe a little early but I can see it based on what I'm hearing here so um, got him at 18 uh, 19, the Bucks, they're tough too because they have a lot of fits. They can go multiple different directions here. I can see them going Hen and Hooker. I can see them going Bijan Robinson. I can see them going with one of those offensive linemen still available. You know, mainly the guards. Looking at Osiris Torrance, perhaps. Multiple routes, but they go Brian Branch. You can man the slot. Uh, you know, and play safety, which the Bucks lost some guys in the slot and at safety. You know, Sean Murphy bunting the slot and a couple guys at safety, obviously. But, um, you know, Mike Edwards goes to the Chiefs. But, you know, Branch, very talented, obviously, instinctive player. Kind of being slept on a little bit right now. 
Uh, and then pick 20, Seahawks go with Cyrus Torrance. will be a plug-and-play guard for them. Um, yeah, this might be the latest he goes. I could see it later. There's some fits after this. But I could see uh, the Commanders at 16. I could see the Lions actually at 18. I can definitely see the Lions there. I can see the Bucks. the pick right before this. The Seahawks, really good fit. Um, makes sense. Definitely makes sense here. 21, the Chargers go B. John Robinson. He's a very tough one to mock. I like, I love Jordan Addison for the Chargers, but he's off the board in this scenario. Uh, so they go B. John Robinson, get their big-time running back, which they need a back as it is. But then Eckler kind of holding out, demanding a trade, wants a new contract. So even more so, do they need a running back. So that's at 21. Uh, so Jackson Smith and Jigba still on the board. The Ravens, you know, they picked up OBJ. They signed Nelson Aguilar. They have Rashad Bateman. They have Devin Duvernay. They still they still need to get better. OBJ only a one year deal coming off the injury. They still you know too good to pass on here. I actually I was leaning towards the Ravens just don't they won't take a receiver even like most of this process before they got OBJ I was kind of in that boat. But now you know if JSN is there I think it's a different story and they would definitely take him if he's available. So. Kind of the one shot. It's, you know, if you're a Ravens fan, you still want a receiver. This is your shot here, because otherwise, I think they're going to pass on one. Um, and they could they could do some surprising things too. They could trade back. I can see that. They can take an offensive lineman, which people aren't expecting. Whenever I do that, the fans complain a, a bit. Um, you know, they could they could go with a corner. So they, they, the Ravens are you know don't really expect them to. In this case, JSN slides to here. You're going to be wanting them. Everyone's going to be wanting them to take them. I think they would have to, right? But Maybe the unexpected. Expect the unexpected here from the Baltimore Ravens. I uh, have another trade here. The Chiefs and the Vikings trade. Vikings definitely could see them moving around with their pick. They're looking to gain some more picks. We saw them trade back last year in the first round. Uh, you know, it feels like they always trade back, and they switch GMs even last year. So they might do it again here. They grab a third and a fourth for moving to that last pick in the first round, which they moved to the end of the first round last year uh, as well. Uh, but yeah, maybe tough for them to move back because a guy like Deontay Banks, who's such a beautiful fit, is still available. But I think they want to gain some picks. There's even some talks about them moving up if a quarterback starts to fall. I can see that as well. But Lucas Van Ness in this scenario, and you don't see him available at 23 often. But in my scenario here, he slipped through. Somebody's, there's going to be guys that slip through. And I, I'm just not as high on him as maybe the media. I can see where they're, under, they're seeing the upside. Like I can see what they're seeing. It's just not quite as high, and I think the lead kind of lead kind of can be in the same boat. Um, but yeah, we saw who, who we have: Miles Murphy, the third pass rusher taken. You know that, and he kind of slipped a little bit. It's kind of the first two happen, and the rest of them slip, right? Because the teams know that it's kind of everyone's kind of even then, and it's kind of deep. Van Ness a little bit of a risky of a pick, so I think he can slide. It's definitely possible he goes. I just don't see around the top ten range. Some people see that, I just don't see it. But it's possible he goes. Yeah, a little bit after that, maybe. Uh, but he's still available in this scenario, which I think is realistic. Some will disagree, but the Chiefs go up and get him, man. The Chiefs will uh, be confident they can get the most out of him, pairing him with George Carlaftis. They did get Omenahu. Nothing set in stone with him. He can move around a bit as well. Um, you know, moved on from Frank Clark. Could they still get him back? It's a possibility. I think they're going to wait and see what they do in the draft first. So 23 31 swap. The Vikings get uh, much needed 95. In 122, some good value, I suppose. This is the range for my, you know, grade with uh, Lucas Van Ness, but they might look like really good value. Uh, 24. I'm sneaking BJ Ajilari up in the first round, guy. That's just I'm liking more and more. The more and more I watch the film on him, I like the fit with the Jags too. I've talked about in the past. I feel like I was wrong on that. Just the more and more I watch film, I thought maybe Nolan Smith to be a fit, but I don't know about that. I, I think BJ Ajilari or Will McDonald. I think these guys. Are fits for a team like the Jags, but Ajilari can rush from different positions, you know, spots, you know, and the outside bend is deadly, very deadly, the best in the class, really. Um, his his struggles is getting off blocks too, but he's on the younger side as well, so still has upside. So the Jags could kind of use a guy that can blitz from multiple spots because they have a guy like Trayvon Walker who can be used in multiple ways, uh, and they had a guy like Arden Key who can rush from multiple spots. He is gone. Uh, you know, so they add Ajilari, and they have Josh Allen, who's a free agent, upcoming free agent. So there's multiple reasons why this makes a lot of sense. Uh, I think he should be taken in late round one. Uh, um, he's definitely been on the rise for me. At first, yeah, I don't love when he when he gets locked into a block. It's very tough for him to shut it. Now that's a tough part. That kind of makes it look like he isn't a first round pick. But there's so much other flashy things to like, and there's so much upside as well. 
uh, and kind of a freaky dude. So I like him for the Jags at 24. I also like Will McDonald for them, which I think uh, him and uh, McDonald and Ajilari are kind of in the same boat for me. I'm very high on them, higher than on them than uh, Van Ness and Nolan Smith, believe it or not. Uh, so I would like those picks around this range here. 25. Uh, this is a really good scenario for the New York football giants. Deontay Banks, who probably should go earlier in this, but realistic scenario here. He can slip through a little bit. Really good press man coverage with uh, some upside in, in, uh, in zone. I've seen him run a little, Maryland ran a little bit of cover three, looked pretty good. Uh, in that category but the Giants run a lot of press man they're looking for a man corner here they need another corner Dory Jackson also an upcoming free agent so I'd like to think they'd get him back he was pretty good for them last year uh, you know but this is just perfect I think this is like a A or A plus scenario here for the Giants if he slips through so if he if he's there I'd imagine I'd imagine they grab him I, I would I really would imagine that so uh, that is who I have for the Giants at 25 26, got the Cowboys taking Steve Avila, who I'm starting to think, you know, I'd prefer him early second. He is a good guard, you know, a guy that you really can't bull rush. And he's talented and he's versatile. This is kind of late first, though, but I can see this with the Cowboys um, kind of preparing for the future for the offensive line, but also right now, too. Tyler, it just really depends. You know, Tyler Smith, they drafted, he played tackle, but they drafted for guard last year, but he looked really good at tackle. They eventually moved him back to guard, but then had to go back to tackle. He looked really good there. Uh, and that that could be, you know, in Smith, they redid his deal where it's one year. You know, Tyler Smith, at left tackle, could be the future, perhaps. And they can grab Steve Avila for guard. It just seems like the, his physicality, kind of like Tyler Smith's, could be a very appealing. just seems like a Cowboys-type offensive lineman. You know, today's era of Cowboys-type offensive lineman. Also, they've had so many injuries and had to move some guys around. And it kind of worked, you know, I don't want to say injuries worked out but uh, at all, but... You know, having Tyler Smith with a tackle versatility, like being able to move him there. Steve Avila has play, could play center. He's also has some snaps at right tackle, so that is huge. And I think the Cowboys would like that. So it just seems like a Cowboys guy. It does feel like a little early. I think he could go as early as the Commanders pick. That's very early, but I I could see it. There's going to be surprises. There's always surprises this year. I think there's going to be more surprises, but uh, I can just see the fit here. Just kind of a gut feeling there. Uh, but we heard if Michael Mayer is available, they would take him. I can definitely see that. But he's he's off the board there. At 16, the commanders took him. Uh, 27, the Bills take Zay Flowers. He's been getting a lot of buzz lately. Like, maybe they would have to trade up to get him. But I wouldn't love the Bills trading up. And then they need more picks. I almost think they would move back a little bit. It would make a little bit more sense. Because they could use receiver. They can use a linebacker. Honestly, could use a corner. Um, they don't really need a safety now because they got Poyer back, but they could look out for they yeah, they two year deal. Hyde's got one more year. They could look out for the safety of the future there. I heard Benford, they could move him to safety. Uh, you know, I they I think they need they need a guard. They might need two guards. I know they signed Mc McDerm or McGovern, excuse me. Um they could use a the, they start looking for a center for the future because Morris isn't gonna last forever. They need a right tackle, they're probably gonna insist on the development of Spencer Brown. The Bills actually have more needs than you think. So trading up, which I heard they can do, and they might need to, and this scenario, Flowers is still there. I wouldn't really agree with the trading up, though, but I would like Flowers for them, a guy that can play in the slot and play outside. Uh, so I, I would like that. Uh, I hope a team that takes him uses him mainly in the slot. I've heard of some teams maybe being interested where if he goes to that team, not the Bills, but that team, I, I, I think they would use him outside, which I don't really I like him still. He's talented, and he played enough there, but don't like it as much. But twenty, it just feels like a Bills receiver here at 27. So team that could trade up, I wouldn't really love it if they trade up unless they got an, like they trade up and they got a guy that was like an absolute steal in that spot, then I really couldn't complain. Uh, 28. Yeah, I had this last time too. Nolan Smith could go. I keep hearing him, 8 to the Falcons. I just do not see it. I'm not buying that smoke, but I could be. I definitely could be wrong. Uh, I watched Nolan Smith on tape, and I, I, you know, I just don't see how he can go that early because he's coming off the injury, which is a small part. Coming off the injury, he's undersized. He plays undersized in the passing game. He doesn't so much in the run game where he's impressive. That's what's usually it's weird when undersized guys, edge rushers, whenever they like play bigger than their size in one spot, usually it's pass rushing. It's almost the opposite with Nolan Smith. He's polished run defender. He's smart. He's tough. Um, he's good against the blocks and run defender, but for some reason against the pass. Um, he, he plays at his size. We're going to be under that. Um, he can get caught off balance. He kind of just relies on He has good get-off. He's got good speed, but he just relies on that. 
you know, and he has pass rush moves, but it, you know, if if the tackle gets a hand on him, it's he can't really complete the the move, you know. So that's a tough part. He will have more reps in the NFL going after the quarterback because Georgia had him sitting and reading and they had him dropping in coverage, and he can do those things, uh, you know. But it's it's tough. I think some teams will be will feel it's a little risky, but uh, I, I think I would like him with the Bengals. Lou Anaromo, you know, with his defense, kind of get creative here. He has two physical edge rushers right now. He has Osai as a depth guy, and they were kind of that's what they were going for with him, like kind of a stand up guy that you know played off ball in the past. Uh, you know, they get Nolan Smith, who almost had off-ball duties a lot of the time at Georgia, who can drop in coverage but also can rush. Um, you know, I think they would like that. I think they would really like that there. Maybe I wouldn't say too good to pass on because this is more of the range for him for me, but I, I think based on what most people think and maybe a lot of the league thinks, maybe just too good to pass on. But, again, tough one to mock for me because he very well could go very early. Maybe it's tough to mock because I, I just don't see him in that very early portion, but maybe he goes in the middle of the first as a possibility as well. Uh, 29, the Saints go Keon White, who's very tricky as well, um, could go in this range. Does does he shock the world and go in the middle of the first? Maybe, because he's a unique player, but I also could see him going late second because he doesn't have a whole lot of experience you know, at defensive end. Uh, I guess for having the lack of experience, he's pretty decent, and the size and athleticism profile is pretty impressive. But he's a 24-year-old with the up, like a raw 24-year-old. That's a tough part. Um, you know, I almost feel like with his size and power, he might be better as like a 3-4 end. Uh, the Saints do like their physical, powerful, lengthy defensive ends, though, so he'd play a 4-3 end in this case. Uh, I would like it a little more because I'm. He's kind of growing on me a little bit just because of my thinking of what we can like what a team could do with him because his tape really isn't that good. Like he's just got a big guy, he's a big guy and he's going full go and he's pretty physical, pretty fast for a side. So there is things to like, but the tape really isn't that good. But I would like him a little more on a 3-4 team where they can play him at 3-4 end. And he seems big for a 3-4 outside linebacker, but he can play it. He's actually dropped in coverage a bit. Just kind of switching but between those and throwing teams off like all right what is that guy doing because he plays both he can drop in coverage that and you of course he can drop in coverage which i maybe with the saints uh davenport i don't know how much he dropped in coverage but davenport they would you know saints are a four three but they would actually have him stand up sometimes like a big body guy that stood up looked a little weird but i thought it was pretty good uh, so they can do that with white i think it's a pretty decent fit but again i do like the idea of him on a three four team playing three four and Three, four outside linebackers. So Keon White's one of those guys that, like, I didn't love his tape. Got a second round grade on him. Could go first round, but I, depending on the team, I could probably grade better than what you think based on my board. If he goes in the first round, he's, a, he's an interesting one. Interesting one to say the least. But Saints like themselves some some big body, def- strong defensive ends with some length. There's a few of them there, so uh, they go with him at 29. Uh, trade. Texans, three picks in the first round. I like what I did with the Texans here. I think this is very realistic, even though it's bold at the same time. They pass on a quarterback at two, which might surprise people. They pass on a quarterback at 12 or maybe pass up on trading up from 12 and and passing on a quarterback. That's going to surprise people. But here you go. You go from 33 to 30, just a small hop up. You get the fifth-year option on your quarterback. You get a pro-ready quarterback who has the polished footwork. That's the thing about Hooker. Who's got the best footwork like the mechanics with the legs the lower body out of all the quarterbacks in this class it's actually Hennon Hooker I mean maybe you could say you could you could say Stroud I'm a huge Stroud guy I'm actually going to say it's Hooker but Stroud's a very close second um, you know and he's an accurate quarterback he's pretty smart you know maybe the you know teams like that would like that he's a little bit up there in age you know going to be he's 24 so the Texans where that system, maybe the quarterback isn't the most important thing, believe it or not. They just want that smart guy where they don't have to teach footwork, and that can make some sense here. So you go up and get that quarterback. You, in this scenario, you hopped over the Vikings, I think more importantly, because we had the Vikings training back. I think more importantly, uh, you get that fifth-year option. Because when Hooker's off that fifth-year option, you know he can be in that prime quarterback range. Well, prime, prime quarterback range is, age is cha- changing right now, but um, you want that fifth-year option on him for sure. So the Eagles looking for more picks uh, as well. Which makes sense because you know they're missing a, they're missing some picks in the middle rounds and they lost a lot of players in free agency, so they only move back three spots, uh, and they get 104, which is a f- high fourth round pick, uh, and that's like way more than enough value for moving back three spots, like way more getting that fourth round pick. So the Texans are owed something back. The Eagles want to gain picks though, so they'll send a fifth back. 
next year. The Eagles actually still win in value uh, in that, which they should. Texans are coming up to get a fifth-year option on a quarterback. Um, you know, so it's a swap, 30 to 33, tiny swap, kind of a big swap, fourth round, fifth round, diff- different year there. So uh, maybe it could even be a little less than what the Texans. It's a little tricky, though, because the Eagles are missing some picks this year around that range. They want to gain picks. So that is a little tricky, but this made a lot of sense to me. Um, it's an interesting, interesting draft because Tyree Wilson, I'm not a fan of at two, but I do like him in D'Amico Ryan's uh, sis, uh, scheme, uh, you know, and Jordan Addison seems early, but like it's fits these are fits like really good fits where they all seem early but i uh, do, wouldn't hate them and then hooker i would like a lot here uh at 30 with them and uh, the texans just get that much better you know adding three three pieces there uh and then we got before we go on to the second round the vikings move back to 31 and i am taking drew sanders here who might be more of a second round guy early second round here we are at 31 you're basically there uh, and they could use a receiver or a corner pretty badly, but they need picks. They need more picks. They don't have a second-round pick. Of course, you don't gain one here from going from 23 to 31, but you gain a third and a fourth, so that's big time. Uh, but Drew Sanders got a ton of upside, ton of upside. He's only played off-ball linebacker for one season, and he was pretty damn good there. The only thing is he missed some tackles, but he was pretty good there. Um, you know, physical, rangy dude. He has a lot of upside there, and he's got experience rushing the passer. He's got experience blitzing from off-ball or, you know, outside. So Vikings bring in Brian Flores, and what they're everyone's talking about. They need they do need a corner. They, they, it's a good thing they got Byron Murphy, but they need this, they need that. But I'm looking at that Brian Flores defense right now, and there's some pieces on it. Don't get me wrong, but do they have? You know, what do you what do you think about when you think of Flores defense? Maybe the first thing you think of is man, man coverage, or I think 50 percent of you would say that. I think 50 percent of you would say blitz. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Blitz or cover zero a bit too, which is man and blitz. Uh, heavy blitz they don't have the guy on the roster that is like a heavy blitzer they got got you know maybe Asamoah could do it because he's athletic you know maybe maybe a safety like Lewis Seen who they drafted last year I could see him being able to do it but they want that high volume big time blitzer and that's Sanders with the inside outside versatility a lot of upside on the inside and will give you production right away blitzing so I absolutely love that fit he's gonna have a second round grade for me but he has tremendous upside and we're at pick 31 here so I would actually like that here at the end of the first round it just makes a lot of sense um in that trade Vikings moving back made a lot of sense uh let's rip through the second round uh Twitter subs if you subscribe to us on Twitter you get a bunch of extra content including whenever I feel like up to, I've, they've got even more mock drafts than the channel has gotten and I'll do the third round for them as well get the the extra podcast episodes as well um so Steelers take Anton Harrison who could go in the first round but they plug him in at left tackle uh the Eagles just traded back with the Texans so they went back to 33 they take Will McDonald the edge rush from Iowa State who I like I think he should go in the first round uh Iowa State kind of had him playing out of position but he can be proved that he can play like there you know over the tackle inside the barely inside the tackle but um should thrive as an Eagles pass rusher Joe Tipman who could be a sneaky one in the first round, not as a center. I don't think a team would take him as a center in the first round. I mean, a center went in the first round last year, but he's got a lot of upside as a guard and an outside zone scheme, which he didn't do a whole lot of at Wisconsin. So I think the Cardinals take him, and they have the option to play him at center or guard. Colts take Jalen Hyatt. You know, if they take Will Levis, you know, he, his specialty is that deep ball, that arm strength. So you're going to need a guy with some speed to get down there. You know, the only thing is the Colts have a type when it comes to receiver. They the same type of receiver over and over, and that would be Jonathan Mingo, which I like Jonathan Mingo. Uh, but you got to go get the speed guy, you know, for Will Levis, and since you don't really have him, and you lost Paris Campbell, you know, and I like Hyatt as a first-round player. So you go Hyatt here at 35. Cody Malk, guard from NC State. Uh, I, a lot of upside as a guard, and the Rams uh, need an offensive line. He's got a lot of upside as a guard. Uh, Seahawks get their D tackle. Like they could go Jalen Carter with that fifth pick. They didn't go in the scenario. They get Brian Bruzzi, who would probably be a first round pick, but has uh, the durability issue, the concerns, of course. Cam Smith for the Raiders. They need that corner. The Panthers, they added a couple receivers, but I could see them going with another one here, a versatile Jonathan Mingo, who can play all over the place and could block very, very well. Upside is a pass catcher. Quentin Johnson for the Saints, get that big body receiver, at pick 40. Uh, Dewan Jones ended up slipping through a little bit, so the Titans grab him, pair him with Nicholas Petit-Frere, former Ohio State tackle. 
Uh, Darnell Washington for the Packers. So this is this last time too. I'm just going to assume that Aaron Rodgers gets traded for one of these second round picks. So that's where that's at. Darnell Washington would be perfect for them who could sneak into the first round. Good blocking tight end with some upside as a pass catcher. Mozzie Smith, I think I've had this before too. The A nose tackle that the Jets could be looking for. Uh, Falcons get Keely Ringo, cornerback from Georgia. Uh, Josh Downs for the Packers. So now they add their slot receiver that they need. Uh, Quan Martin, who's soaring up boards, could play in the slot and could play free safety. The Patriots could use either of those, really, but freak athlete, really good tape as well. Uh, Trenton Simpson, the linebacker from Clemson, goes to the Commanders. I like his coverage ability. Actually was more of a slot corner, if anything, before this year. Uh, we're getting more reps at linebacker. I think Rivera uh, would be pleased with that type of play there. Uh, next group of picks, Kalaja Kansi end up slipping through. I think this is very possible. I think kind of the fans are maybe a little too high on him. I think the, you know, all it takes is one, but you know, uh, it's just the lacking of length and uh, just strictly a three technique guy. Um, is he going to be on the field in running downs or earlier downs? Uh, struggles to shed blocks a little bit. I mean, just crazy production and, and like, wow, like moments, you know, getting after the quarterback, but he can slide a little bit. Lions grab him here. Keanu Benton, which I'm a huge fan of for the Steelers uh, at pick 49 at another D tackle. Heard they could be in on Jalen Carter. If they don't get one there, they grab one here. Would love that. Jameer Gibbs still available. I mean, he could slip a little bit, even though he's super talented because, you know, he doesn't have every down back size. So where do you take a running back first? And where do you take a running back that's going to be maybe an every down guy but doesn't have that size? So could slide a little bit. Be just too good to pass down for the Buccaneers here. Matthew Bergen for the Dolphins. He's an interesting one. I think other people are higher on him than me. He's a better run blocking tackle than a pass blocking tackle. Some people see, see upside at guard. He struggles with power rushers though. Gets driven straight back. I worry about him again. You know, in uh, passing snaps against NFL defensive tackles, like maybe just too physical for him though. So I would keep him at tackle. He's got to work on the pass protection. Uh, uh, Siashko Emmanuel Forbes, who is. I'd say very undersized, actually, but a big-time playmaker from Mississippi State. Seahawks grab him. Isaiah Foskey, who could go early or late first or around this range as well. The Bears get their pass rusher here. This would be great for them. Luke Musgrave for the Chargers get their playmaking tight end. Uh, Lions get their pass rusher now. Felix and Udike Uzama from Kansas State, who would fit there. On the last eight picks here, and again, we'll do the third mock, third round for the mock on our for our Twitter subs. DJ Turner, who honestly could sneak into the late first round, experience in man and zone, experience press, super athletic. Jags grab him. Cedric Tillman for the Giants. I'd like, I would love this Giants draft that I have for them right now, um, with Banks and Tillman. Uh, just really good value. Tillman, you know, legit X receiver. Uh, should judge him more off his tape two years ago than last year. He's playing injured, and he came off surgery and came back and played. Uh, but physical outside receiver. Adi Tamiwa out of Boraway, defense line from Northwestern. Could be a you know play edge, but I like him more inside. I think Dan Quinn try, tries him out at three technique spot. Uh, and then Dayon Henley, linebacker from Washington State, who's got some impressive coverage skills to the Pills. Uh, Carter Warren, who I'm a fan of for Pittsburgh, for the Bengals, who they had another tackle. Uh, Warren would be talked about much earlier, higher than this. Was injured last year, though. Could improve his improve his run blocking. Had a really good pass protector. Bears get a corner. Julius Brents from Kansas State. Really good in zone, which I think Ibrahim wants to run. Love his length as well. A little bit of a surprise here. A huge fan of Marte Mapu, uh, the linebacker slash DB from Sacramento State. Played in the slot a lot. Was listed as safety. Played in the slot a lot at Sacramento State, but also played outside linebacker and then played linebacker at the Senior Bowl. And I was very much impressed. I, I didn't the Eagles could use them kind of both you know they could I, I would like him start at linebacker for the Eagles but they can kind of use them and almost in ways that they use Gardner Johnson as well I mean you can't expect them to be him but I would like that fit a lot I mean he's not getting any talk here but I, I would not be surprised at all uh, then Wanya Morris for the Chiefs uh, which I, I like Morris a lot as well he's a little raw but he has a ton of upside you got to brush up on his technique a little bit he kind of loses balance and leverage sometimes, but he was a top recruit for a reason. He's super athletic. He's super long, got a good build to him. Chiefs would be able to coach him up at right tackle for sure. So I would, I would love that. I mean, he's not getting much talk up here too. So some of those, like some of those guys there. Um, so there you have it. That is my favorite mock yet. I mean, it should be because we're getting close to the NFL draft, feeling good about predictions, but I'm sure I'll have some changes with at least one more mock. Well, I'll probably have one more mock video, but every year I seem to make one last second one, like a couple, a few hours before the draft. Like, and I usually post it on Twitter. So another good reason to follow us on Twitter. 
Um, we're talking more on the Twitter than really on the channel, believe it or not, because we talk a lot here. But let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments here. We're always talking with you guys on Twitter, so we can talk there if you want. Uh, join us on our channel. Like, subscribe, turn notifications on. Full NFL draft content. There's a ton going to come in this last week and then throughout the every day of the draft and then after the draft as well. So make sure you join us here. Links, anything you're looking for, links pinned in the comments. Going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.